Welcome to my video of the Carina, a single staged orbit space plane capable of carrying over 40 tons into orbit, uh, more than a large orange tank full of fuel, uh, using the B9 Aerospace mod and Quantum Struts. So starting with the engines, we have a cluster of five Saber uh, engines, the Saber M in the center, surrounded by four Saber S's. These are part of the B9 pack that can switch between um, air breathing and liquid oxygen. Also have eight additional uh, turbojet engines to help with the atmospheric flight uh, to give the boost needed to get up into the upper atmosphere. Air surfaces consist of dual wings all the way around uh, to give some more lift, which are angled up on the outside to help with stabilization. There are control surfaces along the edge of each wing and a number of air brakes along the top and bottoms to help slow it down when necessary. It includes a docking port uh, with two floodlights to illuminate whatever you're docking to. These are the RCS tanks, uh, secondary RCS tanks. The main tank is up here. It has more RCS fuel than uh, you'll ever need for a single flight. Here we have some RCS thrusters, and there's a avionics control unit. Here are three solar panels on each side for recharging when necessary. On the bottom you can see all the air intakes. This is very reminiscent of a Concorde or F-15 with these rectangular ones, uh, in addition to the circular ones in the front of the uh, turbofan engines. In addition to that, we have the main air intake just behind the canards, uh, which will provide enough air at a very high atmosphere to run the engines until about 40,000 feet. Also some extra intakes, some low profile intakes on the back. Now, one of the cool things with the B9 pack is that if some of the parts, uh, if you click on them, you have an option to start them deployed or not. Now obviously we don't want our cargo bays to start open. Uh, but if we click it for now, then we can actually open it up while we're building and work on the inside. So here you can see a little satellite I built. Uh, this is a fuel depot satellite. Um, it includes a full large orange fuel tank, docking port, um, ASAS, and a remote control unit, along with a number of RCS tanks and thrusters. By putting this in orbit um, and using the RTGs included on it uh, for power, it can uh, stay there indefinitely and be used uh, to refuel any ships that need it. There's a low profile engine on the back in case the orbit needs to be changed as well. I'm going to take this out of here for now uh, so I can show you the internal uh, bay. So here you see we have a docking port uh, with full interior lighting along the inside. These are um, toggled along with the doors in the action group, so they all come on at the same time. Over on the right here, we have a piece that's included in the B9 pack, the info panel. Press I, it pulls up the info pane, uh, which you can edit to um, remind yourself what the action groups are, or to have details about how to fly your ship, or whatever you like in there. Now, what you see here are the quantum struts, and uh, these are a device that basically just create a regular strut between themselves and whatever uh, is in front of them, in front of that red laser. So the blue ones have connected to the opposite side, and the red ones haven't connected to anything. Now, the purpose of these is to be able to put any cargo you want in there and have it connect without having to add struts uh, each time you change your cargo. Now, at the back, we have four heavy-duty batteries, um, just to our power during the dark side. That's the cargo bay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a different satellite. You can use this um, this cargo bay to transport whatever you like up there. Uh, so this is an example of how you would build perhaps a living module for your space station. Um, so just placing somewhere so you can build I'm going to start with a docking port. I'm going to move this docking port a bit here. 
adapter plate, and then uh, whatever it is you want to put on it. Um, so here I'm looking for the habitation module. You know, so we'll throw a couple of those on there. Maybe a third one, I think. Once you have your satellite built, uh, you can add whatever you like on there. As long as it's under 40 or 45 tons, I think you're good. Now attaching it's a little tricky. You gotta kind of look up from below in order to get it to connect. So find the right spot here. There we go. And plug it in. And those quantum struts will automatically connect to it, so you don't need to anchor it in or anything. As you can see, it's just it's an absolutely massive cargo bay. Um, fit, you know, half a space station in there easily. So I'll put the first satellite back uh, because it's a lot heavier and I wanted to demonstrate how heavy of a object it can lift. This is a large orange fuel tank, an engine, um, a remote control module, and docking port and ASAS along with um, RCS systems and tanks and a couple um, power generators. We'll close our cargo bay doors back up here for our launch. And we're ready to go. Now before I go back to the uh, runway to show you the space plane version, uh, I just wanted to show you the uh, vertical launch version that's also uh, included with the release. And this is one that I um, tried after the uh, runway launch and uh, it worked a lot better um, because this thing has such a high thrust to weight that uh, it didn't run off the edge of the runway doing it this way. We'll just turn everything up and the details of what I'm doing here you'll see in the next part uh, when I turn it on the runway. Uh, we're just going to spool it up. Uh, get ready for a vertical launch here. And once those engines are fully spooled, full thrust release, and off we go. Jump forward a bit, try to get some horizontal speed. takeoff version, uh, which is pretty much the same, but uh, I'll give you more details about all the steps that I just took. Alright, so here's our ship. So, first thing we're going to do is set the brake so we don't roll anywhere. And now we're going to open up the cargo bay um, so we can disable the crossfeed from our cargo so that we don't use up our, our cargo fuel, uh, which would defeat kind of the purpose of this. So we'll look at our engines. Now these jet engines take a while to spool up, so we want them to uh, reach full thrust before we release the brake because this run is pretty short. So we watch this, and when that thrust hits about 120 kilodunes, we'll release the brake and off we go. Now, this is a pretty heavy space plane, um, so it does not like to take off in the length of the runway, so we're just going to roll off the end to give it a little extra space and speed, and then we'll take off. Pretty stable design, doesn't fall apart when you hit the ground. It is prone to tail strikes if you're not careful though, so watch how high you pitch up. And we're off. Landing gear. And 
set the precision controls so we don't flop all over the place and we'll pitch up a bit with our trim uh, so we maintain a nice steady heading um, at an elevation of about 55 degrees somewhere in there so this time I didn't quite raise it up high, high enough off the bat uh, but that'll be fixed in the next couple minutes here Everything at full thrust. These engines won't overheat while they're in the atmosphere, uh, so that's not something to worry about. As you can see I turned on the navigation lights here. Uh, the red one's on the wing tips, the white one's on top, and the cabin light is included as well. Uh, that's a nice feature in the B9 pack. It has some really nice lighting effects. There is here I'm pitching up to about 55 degrees. Uh, this thing has a thrust to weight ratio, even with a 40 ton cargo, about it's over 2, I think, so you can theoretically head directly up, but we want to get some horizontal velocity as well. Let's take a look at our pretty sexy ship. Pack is absolutely amazing for visuals. It's just gorgeous pieces that fit nicely together. Although designing this particular plane took me the better part of a day, um, but it all works now. Look at our resources. Make sure that our cargo tank isn't draining. Uh, here you can see that the cargo tank here has about almost 3,000 fuel, uh, and that shows up in our resources tab, which shows about 7,100 right now. Um, so that is not, uh, that's a bit misleading because that's actually more along the lines of 4,300 of usable fuel um, because you have to subtract that 3,000 in the cargo tank. We're going to climb to about 20,000 feet, or sorry, 20,000 meters, um, before we pitch down and start to pick up speed uh, where there's little higher resistance. And so now we're just going to fast forward through this part here because nothing interesting happens until we reach that height. So we've reached almost 20,000 feet, so we're going to start pitching down uh, to about 25 degrees. So here's where we want to pick up some speed really quickly while we have uh, some, still have some air, but the atmosphere is thin enough to allow for some great acceleration. Uh, one thing to remember here is that the fuel drains from the front first, and this thing uh, likes to pitch up. So you'll see me once in a while transferring fuel from the, from the aft. Um, fuel storage to the to the fourth fuel storage. Okay, so here I am pitching down. And this will help us pick up some speed horizontally, uh, which is what we need to get a good orbit. If I stay pitched up too high, then I'll just leave the atmosphere too quickly, and I uh, will run out of air before I can pick up enough speed. goal here is to reach about 1400 meters per second before I switch to rocket power. Um, about halfway along that I'll disable the, um, the jet only engines, the ones above and below the wings. As you can see the number two and three action groups uh, toggle those on and off. They get kind of finicky when they run out of uh, atmosphere, they start flipping the plane all over the place. So by disabling them I can maintain a lot more control. They're balancing fuel again. Tell it's time to turn those off when they start turning a, a yellowish orange and the plane starts swabbling from side to side. So 
right about now you can see them becoming yellow and the plane's trying to go to the right. Keep them on a little while longer to pick up some more speed. And there they are. Turn them off. And you can see the plane becomes stable again. Notice that the aft engines are still air breathing, uh, in air breathing mode, the Sabre engines. I haven't switched to rocket uh, mode yet because there's still plenty of air to keep them uh, in good working order. You can see on the left in the staging area the amount of air they have. Now as they leave the atmosphere and lose air, they will start to lose thrust. And I think when they drop to about 300, or when the center main engine drops to about 300 kilonewtons is when I want to switch to rocket mode. Otherwise the gravity will just start pulling me down faster than I can accelerate. Here I'm still at about 617, still going up actually, so I got a fair bit of time before I have to switch. map, you can see I'm starting to get a nice suborbital trajectory, um, get up some good speed here. Still pretty low in the atmosphere, so I'll have, to, when I do switch to rockets, I'll pitch up pretty quick um, to try to get some more altitude, so I leave the uh, thicker atmosphere, and then uh, pitch back down to horizontal. Increasing speed is still increasing quickly, so I've still got some time. See, my altitude is actually decreasing here. Um, that's because I just haven't pitched up quite high enough to uh, overcome the gravity. Uh, but my speed is increasing fast enough that um, that small drop in altitude is alright because my horizontal velocity is becoming a, a lot faster. And as I start going fast enough that um, that altitude change will become positive, so I'll start picking up altitude um, as I get fast enough that I can start to beat the gravity. that I've stopped losing altitude and I'm going fast enough that I'm starting to pick it up again. I notice that this is happening uh, without having changed my pitch at all. I've kept my pitch at about 35 degrees. Take a look at our engine. Now you can see, okay, the thrust is starting to decrease pretty rapidly um, as I leave the atmosphere and it loses air. So uh, when that hits about 300, um, I'm going to switch to rocket mode, and when I do that, um, you'll see well, the mode change, but you also see the thrust jump up um, significantly higher as it uh, doesn't rely on atmospheric air anymore. And that'll give us the boost we need to get our orbit a bit higher and get out of the atmosphere here. Notice that I don't actually need to use RCS here. Um, the ship has built-in uh, SAS module up in the front, uh, which has a lot of torque that also is helping me keep, keep it uh, from rotating. And a little bit of atmosphere and thrust vectoring is keeping me straight. Okay, so I'm about to th hit 300. You can see my speed isn't increasing anymore. My altitude is still going up, but my speed isn't changing much. Alright, switch to rocket mode, and you see my thrust jumps up to about 860. That's a big change, and now my sp my speed is shooting back up again. Once you leave the atmosphere and switch to rockets, those Sabre engines do like to overheat. Um, I assume it has something to do with no air to cool it anymore, so you do have to throttle down just a little bit to keep those things from exploding. I'm going to shoot for an apoapsis of about 125 kilometers. Um, so now that I'm pretty much out of the atmosphere, going to pitch down a bit and try to pick up some more horizontal speed. You can see the uh, results of my previous uh, test flights. I unloaded a couple satellites in orbit here. 
almost there. And as soon as I hit that, I'm going to throttle off right there, and I'll coast to Apoapsis to circularize my orbit. And I'll fast forward through this part too. Alright, so I've reached my apoapsis. Time to circularize my orbit. So I'll throw on the RCS and turn this beast around. Base it in the prograde. thrust up, and I passed the apoapsis a little bit, but that's alright, I don't need a perfectly circular orbit here. Let's get that up past 100 clicks. And not quite circular, but close enough, within a couple kilometers of each other. Alright, so, I've reached orbit stable orbit, so now it's time to release my payload. Here I'm just trying to get into a good position for the lighting uh, with the sun in the background and the lights on the ship. Take a screenshot or two maybe. Okay, so I open up my cargo bay doors, and this is my favorite part of the flight. This just looks absolutely gorgeous. I filled the cargo bay with uh, interior lights, uh, which really helps. And there you can see the blue lines. Um, in there are actually the quantum struts, so they can hold the cargo in place. And the reason I use those is because then I can put any cargo in there and they'll automatically strut to it, so I don't have to add struts to the cargo itself. So I can toggle those off, don't need them anymore. As you can see, that's by pressing 5. If you toggle them off while you're sitting on the runway, your ship will explode as the cargo falls through the floor. Maybe not with the lighter ones, but certainly with a tank like this. But now that I'm in orbit, I don't need that support. I'll decouple that node there. Try in a good position here. I'm trying to stabilize my ship. You can see the RCS on the uh, on the cargo is actually firing. I could have disabled that, but I didn't. Okay, so decouple the node, and I switch control to my cargo, which has a uh, a probe pod on it. I'll use the RCS to fumble my way out of the cargo bay. This can be done a lot more gracefully if you put some thought into it first. The RCS on this is not balanced, so it likes to flip around. And then I'm going to point this thing uh, to the north, um, exactly north along the horizon, because uh, that is the direction, when you're in an equatorial orbit, that's either that or directly south, um, will keep it from changing heading as it moves around the Earth. So basically it'll just rotate, but it won't flip end for end. This makes it a lot easier to dock to when you want to bring a ship up here and grab some fuel from this thing. So if you look in the resources pane, you can see that this thing is entirely full of fuel. So I didn't actually use any of it to get it into orbit. Give it a name. I have caps lock stuck on here. Call it Fuel Depot 3, since it's the third one that I've dropped off with this space plane. And I'll lock it into its position, activate the engine in case I want to move it later, change its orbit. Um, yeah. Now this just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, Back 9 has done a great job of this with this mod, just the visuals are fantastic. I'm just going to turn off the HUD and take a couple screenshots here. All 
All right, so I'll switch back to my ship, close the cargo bay, and it's time to head back. Oh, I've got to get a couple more screenshots first. And it's time to head back to the runway. The lights are connected to the bay door, so they toggle at the same time. Actually, I messed up my first re-entry, so you can see that I quick save here and then reload it from the same point. You can see I just dropped off my cargo there. Now, my first re-entry, I came in a bit too far. I didn't burn early enough, and I overshot the runway. So I'll turn this thing in a generally retrograde direction. I did this part early actually, I forgot that I have to actually do the retrograde burn first, so I that was me enabling the air mode for entering the atmosphere, um, which was a mistake, so now you can see that I'll undo that in a second here when I realize that I actually need to use the rocket engine again. This is me transferring fuel um, as far forward as possible. So for re-entry, one of the tricks to good re-entry is, is keep all your weight as, as close to the nose as possible. And that basically creates a uh, an effect. So if all your weight is at the front, then the air moving by will will try to um, blow the, the stern end of your ship um, directly behind the center of mass. Which will keep you going straight in the uh, prograde direction. Here's me trying to use sun glare to illuminate the KSC, uh, which is on the dark side of the planet right now. But this looks like about the right spot to make a burn. So, there, I switch it back to rocket mode. Disable my jet engines. start thrusting retrograde. I remember these engines overheat, so keep it at about two-thirds. We don't really care about how fast this burn happens right now. And try to time that so that we will land or re-enter somewhere near the runway. I want to keep roughly 400 fuel um, for air breathing mode so that I can fly around once I'm down there and, and get lined up properly. So switch my engines back to air mode, enable the jet engines. I don't need to burn again until after I'm in the atmosphere. I'll rotate so I'm heading prograde. Once I'm in a good position, I'll turn up the warp speed a little bit. And just before I re-enter, switch back down. So the other trick to re-entry is to keep your, your uh, ship heading in the prograde direction as closely as possible. And that'll make sure that all the the airflow is, is properly across the, the uh, surfaces and, and not flipping you end for end. Well, on this one, I didn't take my, my own advice very well and uh, very nearly lost it, but I uh, kept it close enough that it re-entered um, in a survivably decent mode.
It looks like I'm going to undershoot this runway a bit, but we have plenty of fuel to fly around, so that shouldn't be a problem. This vehicle looks really good with the re-entry effects. Gotta remember to pull your solar panels back in though if you used them to recharge so that you don't lose it. Alright, so here's where I started to lose control a bit, um, fighting to, to keep it heading in the prograde direction. It isn't a difficult thing to do with this ship, I just didn't pay attention for a moment and let it twist away from me. One thing you can do if, with this ship, if you're re-entering a bit too far, too hot, and you're going to overshoot the runway, you can hit the air brakes. Um, it has a lot of air brakes along the along the wings, um, just by pressing the brake button up top, and that'll slow you down pretty drastically. You'll see that when I actually hit the runway, I hit those brakes, and it brings it to an extraordinarily short stop. And so throttle up the engines a bit. I got a little ways to fly. I'm going to fast forward through this part until I'm a bit closer to the runway. Coming in on a decent approach here. We want to keep our speed around 140 or so for a nice landing, maybe a bit lower. Now the one issue with this plane is that even on precision controls, it has a lot of control surfaces, so it's quite finicky. Um, it likes to roll a lot when you hit the roll key, uh, which makes it a little tricky to land, um, but it still works fairly well. Notice the wingtips are actually angled up a little bit, and that just helps keep it flat as you fly through the air. I'll deploy my landing gear. I think the lights on this gear might be a little bit overpowered. That's just the stock part, but be damn right. So I'll get ready to hit the, the air brakes and uh, parking brakes. It'll slow me down as I touch down on the runway. And here is my very, very smooth landing. As you can see, when you hit that button, the air brakes and uh, landing gear brakes slow it down almost immediately, stopping maybe 200 feet on the runway. So here I am, safely landed. Take our crew for a quick little walk out of the ship. Um, show you how the uh, ladders and lights work for that part. If you just hit 9 uh, for the action group, that lights up the ladders and extends them on both sides of the ship. This thing looks absolutely gorgeous when it's parked, when it has the uh, lights turned on. Okay, so apparently it doesn't feel like going the right way down the ladder. The only issue I've noticed so far with the B9 pack uh, is that the ladders don't like to stay where they are. Actually, it's not just the ladders. A couple parts like to float around if you um, put weight on them, like a Kerbal walking on them. And here we are, home sweet home. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning about this plane.